Ezekiel chapter 36. Also, thou son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, to the land of Israel. Actually, literally talking to the land. And say, I know a preacher used to preach, go out in the woods and preach to the trees. I've heard a preacher going out and preach to a herd of sheep. I've stood in the graveyard and preached and never had anybody get up and leave. And they're all Bible believers. And they all believe the King James is the word of God. I had a perfect assembly of people, though the congregation, some were in heaven, some were definitely in hell. And I preached to them. You say, that's stupid. God told Ezekiel, go preach to the mountains. If men won't listen, go find somebody who will. Now, I wouldn't give an altar call. I know some Baptists that would. Or any of your mountains want to come forward and just say this prayer. Ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. And in this passage, it's literal, go preach to the mountain. Thus saith the Lord God. Because the enemy... Now, we just got finished talking about Esau and, and Edom, and it's part of Esau and enemy, but being the enemy. Said unto you, Aha! Even the ancient high places are ours in possession. Now, that's what Esau just said in chapter 35. But, you know, if God would conquer Israel, the Catholics would be happy. The Arabians would be happy. The PLO would be happy. The Iraqis would be happy. The United Nations would be overjoyed. The Iranians would be pleased. The Saudi Arabians would be all oh, great and happy. The Africans would be joyful. And then there would be a world war of all the nations. Oh, it's our land. It's my land. No, it's this land. It's for us to decide. But God ain't ever going to wipe out Israel. Therefore prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord God, because they have made you desolate. And this is after Nebuchadnezzar has come in with the Chaldeans and the Babylonians. And you know, there were people left behind. Babylon left the weak and the poor, the people, and say, Hey, dress these vineyards, take care of this for us. They didn't complete, but it's a desolate land. And swallowed you up on every side. That you might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen. So, you know, the Jews are out, the heathen are in. And you are taken up with the lips of talkers. That's Baptist. You know, gossip. Did you hear about? No, I don't want to hear about. I, I had I was in church one day and I had somebody. Hey, no, I don't want to hear. But wait, wait, I said I don't want to hear. Wait, wait, I had to get a walk up, walk away, and that idiot followed me, trying to tell me what he was trying to tell me. I don't want to hear it. They are the infamy of the people. Oh, look at that, the president. We live in a day of infamy. Come out of the Bible, don't you shut up, you anti-Bible believer. You're the one that drew this nation into war and covered it all up. Therefore, ye mountains of Israel, see, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains, to the hills, to the rivers, to the valleys, to the desolate waste, plural, to the cities that are forsaken, which be have become which become a prey and derision. To the residue of the heathen that round about. I mean the Babylonians and the Chaldeans have come. Judah's gone. Israel has been gone. Therefore thus saith the Lord God. Surely in the fire of my jealousy. God's a consuming fire. Have I spoken against the residue of the heathen. Against all Indomedia. And that's Esau. We learned that. 
previous chapter, which have appointed my land unto their possession with joy of all their heart. Yay, the Jews are gone. It's our land. Hallelujah. This land is my land. This land is your land. Except for the Jews. That's what they're saying. When Judah was taken into captivity, God's all done. Listen, that replacement theology has been going on all the way back to Nebuchadnezzar. With despiteful minds. What's a despiteful mind? It's all about me. They cast out for a prey. We're going to prey on others. We're going to prey on God's people. Prophesied, prophesied therefore concerning the land of Israel. Say unto the mountains, to the hills, the rivers, into the valleys. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy. I had a preacher one time, Jealousy is a sin. You better shut your mouth. Because our God gets jealous. Our God gets jealous when you, Happy birthday, Tamus. Happy birthday, Tamus. Happy December 25th, Tamus. We bought you toilet paper, copy paper, and all kinds of junk. And for our Resurrection Sunday, we brought you Estar eggs. Little children will be dressed up as sperm as they go looking for eggs of Estar. Wait till you see the, the Easter PowerPoint I'm doing. That was a little advertising there. In my fury, don't get God jealous. Because you have borne the shame of the heathen. I mean, they're, they're ranking on the Jews. They're making fun of the Hey, what's your God? Where's your God now? Where's your temple? But they didn't realize the fact is that Israel has sinned and God has punished them for their sin. And wait till God goes to the heathen and gets them for their sin. Because if God punish and judge his people's sins, which he did, which he will for... What do you think he's going to do to the ones that are not of God? I mean, he might give you a worldwide disease. He might make you, what is it, two, three, overnight being stuck on a highway in Virginia? Gas running around, no food, no water. You think that just happened by chance? This big s snowstorm has come and just... You think that's by chance? That another fire out west? You think that's by chance? I don't think it is. Therefore, thus saith the Lord. Look how, look how often God's speaking. I have lifted up my hand. Surely the heathen are about you. They shall bear their shame. Now, it has not been written yet, but study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed. What should have the heathen studied? Now, they didn't have chapter division, but they should study something in Genesis that has already been written. Somewhere along the line, Jehovah spoke to Moses up on the mountain, and wrote that Abraham, if anybody curses you, I'm going to curse them. And you break that, you're going to be put to shame. But ye, old mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches. I didn't know mountains had branches. And you, your fruit to my people Israel. So there'll be the trees on the mountain. Fruit. For they are at hand to come. And there's a long time. You know, God's timing is... Oh, we're like, oh, come on, Lord, hurry. Come on, Lord. Come. God's like, just wait. Just hold on. You know, a thousand years is one day, and one day is a thousand years. Lord, come on. One hour is forever. 
for us. Just wait. Just hold on. All in God's timing. For behold, I am. Notice that I am for you. That ought to rang the Jews' ears, the I am. Moses, I will turn unto you, and ye shall be tilled and so He's talking to the mountain, not the people. And he's telling the mountain, you know what's going to happen, Mr. Mountain? What, sir? The Jews are coming back. <clears throat> All right. They're going to till you, and they're going to sow crops. Cool. And they will keep, in the millennium, they will keep the seven-year rest. All right. And I will multiply men upon you, the mountains, all the house of Israel, even all of it. And the city shall be inhabited, and the wastes shall be builded. So Israel's coming. God ain't done with the Jews. Anybody who says that God's all done with the Jews, ain't reading their Bible, ain't studying their Bible, probably have a perverted Bible. I will multiply you uh, upon you man and beast. They shall increase and bring fruit. That's what Adam's job was. What's the first thing you learn in Genesis chapter 2? And going into chapter 3 before the fall. God made man, made a garden, put the man in the, in the garden to dress the garden. And he said, all right, go give names to the, to the animals. Okay. Hippopotamus, kangaroo. Giraffe, elephant, goldfish, bluebird. I'm running out of names, Lord, here. Are we almost done? <laughs> Flatfish. Does that sound like the garden? Does that sound before the fall? Man and beast? Man, no. There it is. Look what it says. I, I, I don't look at that. Apply unto you men and and beast. Is that right? No. It says man and beast. Take that all the way back to Genesis chapter. How many men were there? There was one. Isn't that interesting? I mean, God's going to put a man on the mountain? No. He's going to put a whole nation of Israel. Now, I would assume that the, that the modern Bible is made, I don't know. I have no idea. But I was saying, uh, Ezekiel 36, 11. Let's see, I'm, I want to know. I'm glad I got this. And you can see, if you're watching the video. Okay, uh, I need not that, I need this one. And we want all English translation. Let's see. Man, man, man. Man, people, C S B, people, C E B, human, uh, children. I guess they don't know the difference between ages. Man, men, D R A, people, E R V, people, E H V, man, man, people, G W. People, GNT, and cattle. Okay. Limited one. People, HCSB. People, ICB. Population, ISV. Man. Man. Population, LEB. People, TLB. Yeah, never mind. MSG. Phew, that's. I don't know. Man, they sure lengthen that one. Uh, man. People, N-O-G. People, N-A-B-R-E. People, N-A-S-B. And then in 1995, the N-A-S-B says man. So I guess they saw the error of their ways. Numbers of human. Numbers of human? N-C-B. Numbers of human. 
I want four eggs of egg for my omelet. People and CV. People and ET. People and IRV. People and IV. People and LT. Human beings and RSV. I don't even know what OJB. Uh, man, man, man. Population of people, voice, man and animal. Hmm. So, the modern Bibles do mess with it. But you see what happened? Man, you ruined the cross-reference back to Adam. Now, now watch, watch. Look at verse 12. I know we're not done with 11, but look at verse. Yeah, I will cause men. I will cause men. I will multiply you man. What did God tell Adam and Eve? Multiply and reproduce? <laughs> Are you missing the cross-reference to Genesis chapter 2 and 3 in the modern Bible? The millennium is going to bring us back to what Adam and Eve were, except, except the serpent will be walking on no legs. For he was walking on legs before the fall. I mean, to go to sleep at night and to the fall, I would assume that Adam and Eve, like Daniel, had a his and her lion. And, you know, it didn't pop a quarter machine, but he had the paramedic. <laughs> Soothing. You know, have you ever watched the Flintstones? I think, I think part, you know, the devil knows the Bible, and he just doesn't make it up. Wouldn't be if Adam and Eve had animals do everything for him? I, I, I think it's funny on the Flintstone, the, the 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 garbage disposal was a pig. Well, they are. They're everything thrown over. You throw it to the pigs; they'll eat it. The lawnmower was some kind of dinosaur. Well, hey, hey, sheep, come over here. This lawn needs to be. And you can find pictures as far as America and Europe and that they would have sheep in the lands to cut the grass. In New York City, there was pigs and dogs to take care of the trash. Now, how I got way off on that one, I don't know. Uh, verse 11, shall man and beast, they shall increase, that's what God told Adam, bring fruit. That's what Adam was supposed to do. And then after Adam fell, Cain brought fruit and God says, I ain't accepting that. I want the blood. Because there was no blood before the fall. Because Eve was snow white. And when she ate that fruit, the blood came in her. Because, you know, every 28 month day of the month, the blood comes out of her. Adam took one look at that woman and said, oh, she got some color in her. She got some ruby red lips that didn't come from lipstick. Wow, am I, you guys are getting extra messages tonight. I'm not even charging you. Now watch this. I will settle you after your old estate. What is the old estate of man? The Garden of Eden. For the Jew, it's when Joshua brought them in the land. When Joshua brought them in the land, what was it? All right, conquer the heathen, okay? Hey, Joshua, we're, we're, we're going to put all the land to the 12 tribes except Levites, okay? Guy comes up. He's in the family of Judah. Hey, uh, Joshua, yeah, this is our land. Yes, it is. That house over there has got the vineyard and all that. Yeah, I want it. All right, go kill him and take over the land. All right? You realize that, and I pre this is one of the first messages I preached. When they went in the land, the houses were built, the vineyards were, were already grown, the crops were already gone, they already had everything. All they had to do is get rid of the, the in, in, idolatrous, religious, heathen. 
and take over the land. Adam did the same thing. Well, who did he take the land over? Lucifer, the devil. And the, the devil, Lucifer, or, the, or Satan, the old serpent, was not too happy. Because here's a man taking over the earth that Lucifer was the king. And the man's giving God the glory and honor. And God said, God, hey, Adam, yeah, let's sit on the tree stump and let's, let's talk for a while. Sure, no problem. How's you going? How's you and the missus going? How's, how's the, yeah, no problem. Until the serpent showed up. The old state is how Israel was. And we'll do better unto you than your beginning. Now what's the better? It's the millennium. I'm going to take the curse off. I'm going to take away your enemies. I'm going to have you build a plant tomatoes and get tomatoes within 15 minutes. The animals are not under the curse. There's no threat of the animals. We have a picture of that in, in the Bible. There was a lion that attacked a man and left the, the donkey or the ass. In the millennium, the ass and the man won't be touched. According to Solomon in the book of Proverbs, there was a fear of lions. Not in the millennium. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. All the great blessings of the millennium. That's got to be God. And I will cause men to walk upon you. Even my people. Israel, God's not done with them. And they shall possess thee. The land. It's their land. And thou shalt be their inheritance. Who? The mountains. So the rightful person, not American, the rightful person say, this land is my land, this land is your land. It's the only land of Israel. Anybody who thinks this is your land, this is my land, you are replacement theology, you are stealing the promises from Israel. You need to repent right now. From purple mountains, there's no purple mountains in America. And the mountains we're talking about in Ezekiel 36, they're God's mountain in God's. There's only one group of people in all the world in the Bible that said they have a right to make a claim to a piece of land that's Israel. Anybody else, you're sinning against God, and then you turn around and say, God bless America, while babies are being killed, while we make fun of our leaders, we violate the Bible, and we buy beer. And thou shalt no more henceforth bereave them of men. You say, well, how can they bereave men? I think it's Absalom. Wasn't there, a, wasn't there a battle in the Bible that it says more men died by the trees than the soldiers in the sword? Many of our Civil War Americans who fought died by the diseases of the, of the swamps and the animals and the elements of the weather. That's not going to be a problem in the millennium. Thus saith the Lord God, because they say unto you, the land devours up men and has bereaved thy name. You know, they're all finished with the Jews. Therefore thou shalt devour men no more. Neither bereave thy nations anymore, save the Lord. No more going to die on the mountain. The mountain ain't going to cause... You know, another thing that could cause mountains to cause death is if they got snow on them, avalanches. If it's a volcanic mountain, it would be the volcanic... They got that... I forget what now, over along the Mediterranean. They got that one volcano where it actually froze the people. I seen the other day that there was a, 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 a man that does shoes, something like that. And the guy was actually frozen in the ash doing a shoe. Well, there's going to be no worry for volcanoes. Now, 
neither will I cause men to hear in thee the shame of the heathen any more. Neither shall thou bear the reproach of the people any more. Neither shall thou cause nations to fall any more, saith the Lord God. A perfect peace, a perfect atmosphere, a perfect world, a perfect under the perfect of Jesus Christ, our Lord God and Savior. It's coming. And it's coming as Israel, the people of all the people. 